the Indian Arctic program is about a decade old now, and uh, uh, the two pictures show the uh, Indian station, a cute looking small station in near Lassen, Svalbard. Uh, what was the need to start? Uh, as everyone knows, Arctic Ocean, uh, it governs the Earth's climate and then it records the past climatic uh, history very faithfully. Uh, the climate change is felt first and fastest in the Arctic and its impact is global and it can affect and we have also seen that it affects systems like the Indian monsoon which is of great significance to our economy. The rapid loss of sea ice, the enhanced metwater input and the freshening has accelerated the hydrological cycle by having extreme events in tropical regions. The loss of biodiversity and its uh, consequent ecological balance is also a matter of great concern. So keeping these points in mind, in 2007, the government of India explored the feasibility of dotting the country's scientific agenda in the Antarctic region, which is about four decades old, with the Arctic. And the institute from where I am coming, NCPAO, <coughs> was uh, identified as the nodal agency. Uh, currently, we operate uh, a station, uh, Himadri. It's uh, about uh, 78 degree north uh, in the Svalbard, uh, 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 Svalbard region in New Orleans, which is a very uh, popular scientific village for Arctic researchers. As you must be knowing, it was like it was a mining town, which was later uh, converted into an international uh, research village with fantastic facilities and it offers a very unique geographic position in terms of different aspects of science like that like it gives you a kind of a live laboratory for understanding ecological changes it's, it's ideal to understand uh, the transport uh, of environmental pollutants into the arctic the arctic ice cover and its albedo and so on and so forth and the logistic facilities offered uh, there at uh, Nielsen is also very important uh, and one of the main uh, factors that uh, was instrumental uh, in India having a station in Svalbard. So the first step, uh, we had a five member uh, team led by uh, Dr. Rasik Ravindra who was uh, our director and then at that time we focused more on glaciology, microbiology and atmospheric sciences. To identify, we identified the gap areas and we would like to contribute uh, to these aspects. So, on the 1st July 2008, we had the official uh, uh, opening of our station, Himatri. Uh, and then, uh, these are some of the photographs of the station when we were <coughs> we basically in the uh, bed lab and the dry lab facilities, living facilities, uh, uh, computer room, etc. in the station. At a given time, about eight scientists can work uh, simultaneously in the station. And progressively, we also uh, 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 took up an uh, observatory uh, in New Orleans itself. It's called the Global uh, Atmospheric Station. And currently, we have instruments like serometer, uh, radiometer profiler, rain radars, etc. installed in, uh, in the station. And uh, the data almost comes at a real-time basis to our institute. So, another important aspect of uh, why we are in New is because of the marine laboratory which is there in New Orleans. So, it gives us a very uh, uh, fantastic facility to conduct marine research and eventually many of our projects in the Arctic <coughs> New Orleans region are mounted based on marine uh, observations. So, these, were the these are the current trust areas of research, the Ponsfjordian system, the natural view, the natural laboratory for elucidating uh, signals of climate change, the hydrological cycle, aerosols in black hole, and mass balance in snow air and tracking studies in Pacific Ocean. So the major objectives of the Constituent program are to understand the variability in the Arctic and Atlantic climate signals uh, based on the freshwater runoff uh, from the glaciers, to understand how they interact and uh, their consequence on the biological productivity, the uh, uh, species composition of certain uh, phytoplankton, etc. in the field, 
and what uh, what what is the trigger mechanism for phytoplankton uh, blooms and its temporal uh, variability and biomass production. So uh, uh, basically, we uh, do the sampling during uh, uh, from June uh, till mid of October. For every like every 15 days, we have uh, intense sampling of the Arctic floor to understand various parameters, uh, like uh, the chemi chemical profiles, the nutrients, phytoplankton, bacterial abundance. So name it. Uh, we have been monitoring it for the last uh, several years. And uh, one led to the other, and then there was uh, the need was identified that we need to have a, a continuous uh, observation of uh, the cloud hydrological parameters. And uh, we uh, deployed a mooring, it's a subsurface a small mooring in Kongsfjorden, which has an array of sensors uh, like the temperature, salinity, current meters, nutrients photosynthetic active radiation, carbon dioxide, etc. So it gives almost uh, faithfully records around the year. And we have uh, currently about four years of uh, data from the Kongsfjorden. And this data is in sync and is being analyzed together with the other data from the Kongsfjorden area, the other moorings deployed by other institutes. So coming to the mass balance studies, uh, we started off uh, with a small glacier, the West Lake Global Brain Glacier. And then, uh, consequently, we moved out to a slightly bigger glacier uh, called the Ferring Brain Glacier. And uh, what we uh, do is we have a, a network of uh, stakes uh, in the, both the glaciers. And uh, we do the uh, mass balance. We measure the stake <coughs> both in the winter as well as the summer. We conduct GPR surveys on these glaciers to understand the profile of the ice, the bedrock. And then we also have uh, the snow air flux uh, measurements uh, during the winter time. So this is in general the glaciological aspects and probably Dr. Kamban will be giving more insights onto this. The other aspect which uh, has been more, more uh, uh, continuous uh, monitoring is the aerosols and black carbon. So as I said, we have a laboratory which house all these uh, uh, instruments like ethylometer, nephrometer, microtops. This, we, we do it on campaign mode as well as we do uh, on uh, continuous mode from these stations. And uh, the, the micro rain radar uh, gives you the precipitation measurements in the region. We have accelerometers to study the clouds, uh, radiometer profile, uh, profiler to understand the PVT profiles, etc. So it's a very uh, opposite uh, array of instruments uh, in this area. So uh, to kind of uh, summarize, uh, the thrust area has been uh, the long-term monitoring of Arctic fjords for climate change, to understand the Arctic aerosols, the anthropogenic activities uh, and their influence, the influence of uh, the uh, hydrological cycle uh, in the Arctic and how it is changing and how it is getting how it is connected to the Indian uh, summer monsoon and the mass balance of our glaciers. So we have uh, about over 350 researchers uh, have already visited uh, this facility and we have uh, pretty over 80 research <coughs> publications in peer-reviewed journals and uh, we manage the station for about 200 days in a year and we uh, have fairly uh, very good participation uh, from national laboratories and universities. And uh, if you see the Himalayan mandates and the number of expeditions, the number of projects that we mount uh, in Yellowstone, uh, there's been a steady increase, a steady demand, and we anticipate that it will continue in the near future as well. And uh, as, in, as uh, in CPR, we are also involved with NISMAC uh, since 2008, which is the Yellowstone Science Managers Committee. We are also part of IASC since 2012. We have an observer status uh, in the Arctic Council since 2013 and recently we have also been inducted into the SIOS in the uh, U-Arctic. And the ongoing and future plans is we do have observations in the Yorison region but we also have uh, plans to expand our observations beyond uh, New Yorison, beyond Svalbard, probably uh, to the other uh, uh, Arctic realms to have a more pan-Arctic uh, perspective to the research what we are doing. And we uh, are fostering 
close uh, cooperation with academic institutions so that uh, in the coming uh, in the immediate future uh, we will be also uh, in a position to run uh, certain master's programs which are having courses uh, which are focused more on polar research so we also intend to have a network of observatories so it's it's not only about arctic here it's about the antarctic we have two stations in the antarctic the himalayan station so we have we would like to have a set of uh, instrumentation set of observations network over all these uh, three poles uh, and it's already on uh we need to have uh, large scientific observations uh, in the arctic ocean and uh, recently we uh, collaborated uh, on a cruise uh, <coughs> into the chukchi sea and the east siberian sea and it was quite uh, beneficial so that we could expand our ocean observations we uh, intend to have uh, more engagement in the arctic council and its working groups and also work closely with ngos like the arctic circle that is the precise reason why we are here so with this uh, i thank you for your kind attention